Island Landscape – Study of Great A's Continental landscapes, flat and mountainous, have already been the subject of experimentation. Likewise, rural and urban. And, as a function of them, a specific outcome, a kind of man. But nothing, as far as I know, has been written about the landscape of the Atlantic Islands, the Canaries. The north of the islands is dominated by mountains, which resolve their topography in vertical gestures, plummeting into the sea. Towards the south, there's a hilly incline and the gentle slope bathes in beachy foam. Then, the blue openness of round horizon, the plain. Hence, the Canarian landscape is dualistic, flats, mountains, in a certain way. It has a distant horizon. Through it, it can be connected to the landscape of the Pampa captured in The Spectator 7 by Ortega. A landscape which drinks in the skies. And even when the towns climb up the mountains, fleeing the sea in the invasions it brings, their horizon drinks the sky up there, not below, as might be inferred from the elevated position of the spotter. From the town, the hillside slopes down to the shore. From the shore, the sea rises up to the horizon. In a crystallographic geometry, the marine and telluric plains form a dihedral angle whose edge is the coastline. Thus offers the landscape a relevant depth, a depth that delves in grace. Rain clouds are regulators of the extent of the landscape. A clear living mechanism exists. The grey presence breaks the distant equilibrium, the stasis of clear days in which the horizon is defined with a perfect, classical, masterful stroke. Dark avalanches take possession of the entire scenery, and the rich blue vein crumples, blurs, and vanishes. The visual field decreases shortening in direct proportion to the intensity of the grey. No sea reaches the island, pathways. No sea leaves the island, a pathway too. Isolation. Yes, I know you can miserate. Do not yell it, drift in iceberg. The faraway curve gets closer, pressing against our intimacy. It melts with the stony outline. At that point, only the foreground remains. A foreground that drapes us in a different way of feeling. It is in the horizon that music triumphs over plastic, the passion of extension over its substance, as Spengler said. We could say that music is marine and plastic is earthly. A musical feeling prevails in the islander, and in him, distance is love, but an active love, a dynamic distance that draws closer and farther as a function of clouds and melancholies. The island soul is sea, horizon, music, melancholy. Land is like the orchestra in a cinema. Faced with the real, the sea, the sound lines, the bright contours, vanish, and what remains is the feeling of a confusing smear of sounds. Absorption of distance. Complete.